Hello and welcome to the Dumb Shits Guide to Extreme Reactors. In this video, I'll be showing you everything from the basic reactor up until the reinforced reactor and all the processing required to get up to Insanite. So let's start with your basic first reactor. So you're going to need a few things for this. You're going to need a controller, a casings, the reactor glass, fuel rods, control rods, a solid access port, and a forge energy tab. All of these have to be the basic variants. The basic reactor has a size limit, which is five by five. So as you can see, like so, it's five by five. The bottom has to be casing, and then you have to go up on each side with reactor casings along the borders, I guess, like so, whoops. Like that. Now you're gonna want five or a minimum of two control rods, or sorry, two fuel rods, sorry, three fuel rods and one control rod. That's my bad. Um, you're going to need a minimum of three and then one. You can also go like this, for example, and have them like this. So you can have up to five in a basic reactor. Let's quickly build that up. Now you're also going to want a solid access port. We're going to place it here and we're going to want a forge energy tap. We're going to place it here. And you want your controller slap smack dab right in the middle. These can be, sorry, these can be placed on any face as long as it's not one of the edges. And they have to be surrounded by reactor glass. You also want to make sure you've got glass on top as well, like so. And now we should see our reactor form. Yep. So now you can see the GUI. It has some very helpful information. Um, you can void any reactants present in the reactor, which is any of the fuel or the um, outputs. Um, <clears throat> you can also can set the waste ejection mode. We're actually going to need two ports. I've just realized for this reactor. So we want an input port and an output port. So we'll go like this. We're going to set this one to outlet mode. Outlet mode will export any waste created by the reactor. So now you've got it all set up. What now? So you're going to want uranium or yellowite for your basic reactor. In this case, we're going to use uranium because this is in all the mods nine. Place the uranium inside the reactor. No, not in that one, inside this one. And that uranium will be placed inside the reactor. Now we're gonna turn the reactor on and it's gonna start heating up and it's gonna start burning through the fuel. Currently it's generating around five kilo FE per tick. We're gonna quickly grab a, um, let's just grab an ultimate energy cube from a mechanism. And we're gonna grab a universal cable like so and a configurator. Just for the sake of demonstration, so that we can, so it doesn't fill itself up with, with um, energy. So it will output the energy into this energy cube, like so. So currently we're sitting around 6.26 kilo FE per tick. You can also increase this by using reactor moderators. A moderator is a block that you place inside the reactor that gives the reactor special properties. There's too many to list here, so I will link a Reddit post um, describing all of them in the description below. Now that we have our reactor formed and up and running, we're gonna talk about the control rods. You can set the name of each of the control rods at the top here. You can also set the um, the extension of the rods. Basically what this means is if you have this number set here to let's say a hundred. So that's gonna, and we're gonna click change all to change all five of these to hundred. That's gonna slow down the fuel burn rate by a pretty extensive degree. At, in fact, at 100%, it's gonna slow it down to almost zero. So you're gonna be getting a lot less energy output. However, you're gonna burn through your fuel less quick. So you're gonna burn through your fuel slower. This number can be adjusted by holding shift and clicking on one of the arrows to go up by 100 or control to go up by values of 10. So let's set it to 50. We're gonna change all of them. And as you can see, we're now generating a little bit more energy and we're also burning through our fuel slower. So that's a basic reactor. What about the reinforced reactor? The reinforced reactor is basically the same as the basic reactor, except it doesn't have a size limit, or at least the size limit is much, much, much larger. The ports you're gonna need is gonna be the same. The the like blocks for the face are gonna be the same. You're gonna need a controller. You're gonna need a energy tap. You're gonna need a two solid access ports. Um, however, they have to be the reinforced variant and you're gonna need probably a lot more glass and a lot more casing, a lot more rods to build a, a 
functional reactor. Now let's talk about the next important thing, the reprocessor. The reprocessor is a three by three by seven multi-block. To build it, you need three by three on the bottom. You need a collector in the middle face. And then we're gonna need to go up one, two, three, four, five, six, like so. Do that on all four sides. Oops. And like that. Now in the top, you're gonna to want a waste injector. And then on one of the sides, you're gonna need a fluid injector. You're also gonna need an output port, an energy tap, and a controller. And then you're just gonna to to fill up every other side with this uh, reprocessor glass. There is no reinforced variant of the reprocessor and there's no different multi-block. It's just this, this is all you have to make. How a reprocessor works is you put a ingot input in the top and then you inject a fluid into the side and that creates a new ingot. So let's have a look at some of the examples of that. So if we go, oh, not using the creative inventory, we want to use the JEI. So let's say you want to make plutonium. Let's look at the recipe for that. So we click on the reprocessor tab once it loads. The reprocessor is water and cyanide to create plutonium along with some energy. I will be going over a setup for um, re uh, several reprocessors and several fluidizers um, here in a minute to demonstrate how to get the entire process up to its start running. Before we do that, let's discuss the fluidizer. Now let's talk about the fluidizer. There's two variants I have here. So the fluidizer can be used for two things. It can be either used to turn solids into fluids or it can be used to combine fluids. Let's talk about example one. So a fluidizer is a three by three of fluidizer casings. It has to have a power port, a output port, um, glass on any face that doesn't have a port on it and it in a solid injector. You can make them bigger than this. They don't have to be this small, but this is the minimum size you can make. And this is probably all you'll need for the most part, unless you're using extreme reactors as your primary source of power generation. Another option is the fluidizer mixer, basically, where you have, I have an output port on the top here, and then I have two fluidizer fluid injectors on each side and a power port on the back. What this does is it combines two fluids to make another fluid. So let's use plutonium for example. So you can use a fluidizer to convert plutonium into liquid plutonium. You can also combine uranium and plutonium to create viridium. You can also do this with fluids. So if we go in here, you can combine eulorium and plutonium fluid to create viridium fluid. And you can also use the plutonium fluid as a reactor um, fuel. Now that's another important thing to discuss before we go and I'll show you my example. So different materials can only be acquired by having them as re uh, the result of reactor fuel, uh, reactor sort of like waste. So certain materials are only reactor waste. One example of this is unless you go in down the productive bees route or the mystical agriculture route, cyanide. Cyanide can only be gotten from a reactor burning uranium. There is options for productive bees and also uh, mystical agriculture, but you need a starting point of having a reactor. You can also uh, use the reactors with plutonium as the fuel to create magentite. Magentite is very important because it's used to make, I believe, radiculite, I think. Uh, yes, it's used to make radiculite along with ludicrite. There's also um, rosinite, which is a result of using viridium as a fuel in the reactor. Rosinite. This one. And that is very important because it's used to make inanite and insanite. Now, if you want to make a reactor that has a liquid fuel, you're going to need, I believe it's the fuel injection ports. Yes, these. So you're going to need the fuel injection ports. Uh, can I open the GUI here? No, you can't. I'll show you it later. Um, you're going to need one fuel injection port for the viridium or the plutonium, and you're going to need one ejection, uh, injection port for the output of the of, of the product. So now that we've discussed how to build all the multi-blocks, let me show you a setup that I have in my current survival playthrough. So here we stand in my current survival playthrough that, um, if you've been keeping up with, we've just finished off um, a bunch of reactor stuff, including the mechanism stuff. But we're not talking about that right now. We're talking about extreme reactors. So this is an example of a reinforced reactor. This one is quite big. It's currently producing only about 265 kilo FE per tick, which isn't amazing, but it's something. Now let's talk about my reprocessor array and my fluidizer array and all this jazz. So let's talk about a step-by-step -step process of how you get to insanite. 
So step one is cyanide, which you get from these reactors that are fueled by uranium. That cyanide goes into, I believe it's this one. Nope, not that one. This one? Yes. So that uh, cyanide goes into here with water to create plutonium. That plutonium has two places it goes. One is into a fluidizer. Another is into another reprocessor, which combines plutonium with cyanide fluid to, I believe, create... Uh, what is it? I think it's... Tony... Wait. Plutonium. I believe it's... Um, reprocessor. Yes, to make ludicrite. So the cyanide fluid plus the plutonium ingots creates... I've forgotten the name of it already. I, I just looked at it and I've already forgotten the name of it. Ludicrite. We get the cyanide fluid from here, which is a fluidizer that fluidizes cyanide. This one right here is to create yellowrite. The yellowrite fluid is combined with plutonium fluid in here to create viridium. This one right here, I believe, is for... Yeah, plutonium fluid. So this one's for cyanide. This one's for yellowium. This one's for plutonium. This one's for viridium. These ones fluidize ingots. This one combines fluids together. You can use that viridium in a reactor to create rosinite. So I've currently got this reactor running. I've got some emeralds um, blocks as moderators, and that's producing rosinite as a waste output. This one over here is using plutonium as a fuel to create magentite as a fluid output. That magentite goes into, I believe it's this one. Yep, magentite plus the ludicrite from before to create radiculite, I believe. Uh, radiculite. Yeah, radiculite. So the ludicrite plus the magentite creates radiculite. And that radiculite is then combined with the rosinite from the second reactor to create inanite. I believe it's in this one right here. Nope. In this one right here. So the rosinite plus the ludicrite, which we can see in the top here, oh sorry, the radiculite, creates inan uh, inanite. Insanite is used by combining this uh, benitoite, which you can find by mining, with ros rosinite to create insanite. It's a lot of steps, but how do I keep this efficiently running? I'm using what's called the level emitters from AE2. So I've got these five fluid tanks here with plutonium, viridium, magentite, rosinite, cyanite, and ylorium. So I don't want to fill up all of my stuff with too much ylorium, for example. So I believe it's this one. Yep. So I've got uranium going into this fluidizer. It's got a ME level emitter on it. So when this hits 256 buckets, because I've got a storage bus in the back, then it enables this redstone torch on this level emitter. So when it's above or equal to this limit, it activates this redstone torch. Inside the export bus, I have a redstone card, and it's got it set to active without signal. So it'll only pump uranium into here when I when I start running out of yellow uranium in here. Same with the, um, I believe it's the viridium. Where is it? Viridium, this one? Yeah, it's empty right now. But how this one works is once I hit 256 buckets of viridium, then it's going to turn off these two export buses. So I'm going to stop making it because it means this is full and it means that's full. I've got the similar thing set up for plutonium because I want to have plutonium fluid for this reactor. And I also want to have plutonium fluid uh, for um, the viridium. Sorry, this one over here. So I want to have plutonium for here and here. So once once this is full, um, I th no, it's not this one. It's... Plutonium is this one? Nope. This one, yeah. So once I have 256 buckets of plutonium, which is this one over here, then it stops making more plutonium. Uh, that allows me to use the plutonium solids to create the previously mentioned ludicrite. It's a bit of a setup, but it is very much worth it because this produces a, a, a pretty okay amount of insanite. I think we're up to, let's see, insanite. Uh, we have 237 insanite ingots, and we've already got an insanite block. This is more than enough for the star. So if you are wanting insanite for the star, then this is a good system to leave running while you do other stuff. But yeah, there you go. There's a system on how to set up um, extreme reactors and to automate insanite. If you have any further questions, feel free to leave them in the comments, and I'll do my best to answer them. Um, and that would be everything for this video. So please feel free to subscribe if you want more of these dumb shits guides. 
And if there's any mods you're currently struggling with, let me know in the comments so I can do a dumb shits guide for that. Thank you guys very much for watching and have a fantastic rest of your day. If you need a more visual guide of uh, the exact process, I've got one up here. So uranium in a reactor creates cyanide. Cyanide in a fluidizer creates liquid cyanide. Cyanide in a reprocessor with water creates plutonium. Uranium in a fluidizer creates yellorium. Plutonium in a fluidizer creates liquid plutonium. Liquid plutonium plus yellorium inside of a fluidizer equals viridium. Viridium in a reactor creates rosinite. Liquid plutonium in a reactor creates magentite. Plutonium plus cyanide in a reprocessor is ludicrite. Ludicrite and magentite in a reprocessor is radiculite. Radiculite and rosinite equals inanite inside of a reprocessor. Benitoite and res rosinite inside of a reprocessor creates insanite. I hope this is a, um, a better visual uh, representation so you can sort of like work your way through the checklist.